I don't really want to start this video off in a negative way, but I'm just going to be honest with you. If you're a very sensitive person, I would urge you to probably click away right about now. We're going to be talking about elephant hunting. You know, they are pretty much being held captive without any rights. They're not even treated properly in a lot of situations. In India especially, there are, you know, elephant rides which happen almost every year, almost all the time. It's like, you know, it's, it's a very popular tourist attraction in India. And unfortunately, what happens is that you know, these, these well-meaning tourists, because I don't think they know any better, right? They've just landed in India for the first time for themselves, so they don't even know what India is all about. And they just want to learn about India's culture and India's history, and they just naturally assume that elephant rides are, you know, just an Indian cultural thing, and, and they don't care enough uh, to really ask these owners about the conditions that these elephants are forced into. You know, because a lot of these elephants that are used for these elephant rides are stolen away at birth, like right from the moment that they're born. When they're baby elephants, they're just stolen away from their mothers in the forest. The, the, the main thing that they're trying to do is they're just trying to make money off that elephant. That's the main thing that they're trying to do. So in certain cases, there have been stories of abuse. I, ha I did my research on this topic, guys, so I'm not just going to talk out of my ass in Hindi. You know, uh, we say, you know, ye banda hawa mein baat kar rahe. To main hawa mein baat nahi kar raha hu. I've actually done my research on this topic. And I'm going to tell you guys what I think. First of all, did you know that elephants have 257 million neurons in their brain compared to an average human being who only has 86 million? Okay? Elephants are shown to have higher levels of empathy than humans. They are more emotionally complex than humans. They have even their own structures that they follow. They have their own social and, and you know, family structures and, and hierarchies in their own communities. It's fascinating stuff. They have shown two use behavior. Did you know that? So there have been stories of elephants picking up tools, right? Like actual small tools like sticks, like wooden sticks. And then they use those tools to scratch their backs or they use those tools to swat at flies, right? If there's flies everywhere, there's like a fucking swarm of flies that's attacking them in the middle of summer. Uh, in that situation, you know, that's when they use those sticks to pretty much, you know, get rid of the flies. So they're very intelligent creatures, okay? They have an incredibly com uh, complex communication system. And that involves infra infrasound and sound waves, which I heard that they can actually use these sound waves to, to communicate through the ground. So it feels like tremors to the rest of us, but these elephants can actually understand the meaning behind these tremors, even under the ground. And uh, that's just one of the ways that they communicate. We don't even know how they communicate. You know, it's, it's funny because humans just assume that we're the smartest creature on this planet, but you know, what is really the definition uh, what does it mean to be intelligent as opposed to being unintelligent? We can't even understand the language that these elephants use. So how can we ever even assume that we understand their thoughts or, or their ideas? We cannot understand their thoughts or their ideas, okay? And the same thing with dolphins, by the way. The dolphins also have their own language. Holocene species, most, that is the most recent uh, species of elephants that are you know, around today, okay? 11,700 years ago, that's when they came about and they are even here right now till this very present moment. In the 1970s and 80s, there was a lot, there was like a an ivory trading crisis going on um, just, just all over the world. There were so many elephants that were being poached and killed for their ivory, for the, the ivory is the material in their, in their tusks. And, um, you know, it, it got it got pretty bad. It got very, very bad. That's what basically led to the ban of the ivory trade in 1990. That's what happened. So that was a very good thing that happened. But it isn't really that great because ivory trading is still happening. There are restrictions, mind you. Okay, there are. 
but I don't even know how effective some of those restrictions are, to be very honest with you, I don't know. One third of an elephant's tusks are in its skull, okay? So it's not like, it's not just a bone that's sticking out, okay? It's not like a bone that just sticks out, no, it's literally, it, it connects to their skull. Again, we don't know how these creatures think, we don't know anything about their brain, bro, okay? And we're killing off like one of the biggest parts of their brain. If you, if you want to put it like that, that's basically what we're doing. Is that the right thing to do? I'll let, I'll let you be the judge of that, okay? Two to six percent of elephants these days are born without tusks. This is a growing trend. It's like we are trans we are changing the evolution, bro. We are, uh, that's what we're doing. We are literally changing like the evolution, the entire evolutionary structure of this species. That's pretty much what we're doing right now. Males have tusks that are seven times the weight of a female elephant, which is why they tend to get poached more. Tusks are super important for things like self-defense against predators and like lions, as well as for foraging, right? So if they have to protect themselves, that's when they would need to, you know, that's when they need their tusks. In those types of situations, they need their tusks to be able to actually attack the enemy and prevent the enemy from attacking them. Some African parks are seeing growth in their elephant populations, which is a good thing, but there's also protected game farms near some of these parks, which is what I discovered. These elephants are, you know, they are bred for hunting. That's it, for the sole purpose of hunting. Is the population only growing in these hunting grounds or is it growing all over the world? I don't know, I was not able to find that information, but I can tell you it's happening. It's happening right now as we speak in some of these hunting grounds. That's where these elephants are getting killed, but also bred for fun, for just lit literally for fun. China. So this is another thing I found out. China has announced that by the end of 2017, they want to end domestic sales and the processing of ivory. And they actually made that decision in 2017. Shout out to China. So then I came across this very horrific video and again, I, I genuinely believe that you should not consume negative content. It's bad for your heart. It's bad for your soul. Uh, but at the same time, there, there is an important message over here that I want to get across. So I feel like it is necessary for me to talk about this. This family of elephants just peacefully walking by themselves and they get attacked. They get attacked by these, these hunters and these hunters just start attacking them for no reason. And then one of the elephants dies and you can hear the baby elephants crying. And, um, and as a result of this, the entire group of elephants become charged with anger and they decide to start charging towards these hunters. They start, you know, at that point, these hunters, they're just like, okay, we need to, we need to get away from this situation. We don't wanna get killed. So they obviously start retreating as well. So, um, but in that one particular video that I'm talking about, I found out that there are several Several of these private game reserves, bro, that are connected to Kruger National Park, okay? In South Africa, there are no fences between these hunting grounds and the adjacent Kruger National Park where elephants are being protected. So what that means is that these elephants could easily walk into, you know what I'm saying, into this hunting territory. They wouldn't know it. They would have no idea that they've just walked into this territory. They would not even know it, bro. Kind of scary stuff. There's only, this is a crazy statistic, okay? Only 25,000 elephants left in India with only 1,000 male tuskers. That's scary. All across South Africa, like across South Africa, that is. That number is a bit higher. That number is like 400 something thousand across the world, which is still not that bad, but it's it's pretty frightening though. It's still frightening stuff because when you're really paying attention to those numbers, you understand that humans are, you know, there's what, 8 billion humans, billion, 8 billion humans, right? When the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species, it's also known as CITES. So just like city, it's spelt like city with a C, but it's CITES. They, they downlisted three populations of elephants in Africa in 1997. This increased to four countries in 2000. So they basically came to this agreement and they said that we actually want to give three different countries the right to make, it, at that time it was like a one-time sale of ivory 
of 50 tons of ivory. It was given to Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe. Okay, this was in 1997. Now, fast forward to where we are right now. According to sites, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa and, and also Zimbabwe, four of them now, are authorized to make ivory sales, single sale mind you, but it, you are allowed to sell ivory, these countries are allowed to sell, and they are allowed to sell up to 108 tons of government owned ivory. Considering the fact that there's only a couple hundred thousand elephants left in the world and there's so few tuskers, I don't think that's a good thing. There are some, uh, I guess you can say, there are some good actors and there are some good faithful charities that are trying to do the right thing. And Sheldrick Wildlife Trust is one of those charities that is trying to help some of these baby elephants that in, in some cases, these elephants have quite literally been abandoned by their family members. Their family members either got killed or hunted, but the baby elephants were saved by Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. You can go on their website. It's called sheldrickwildlifetrust.org. There are tons of ways that you can help. You can donate 50 US dollars today. That is one option to adopt an elephant. 50 US dollars. It goes very, very far. I truly believe that we can help these elephants. We can save these elephants. I feel like we can do it. But if we want to do it, then the only way to do it is to start right now. And Sheldrick Wildlife Trust is a good place to start. You can do your research and, you know, try to verify them yourself. I have done the verification. To me, they seem like a legit charity. With that being said, my friends, take care, be safe, and let's try to save these elephants, man.